Good morning. Today, I'd like to continue talking about loops and take the opportunity to introduce floating point variables as well as the integers, which we've already looked at. Since I know I'm going to have to have an end program statement, there's no harm in going on and putting it in now. I'll have some integers. Now, I'm also going to want to have some floating point variables. In Fortran, there are at least two different kinds of floating point variables on any compiler you look at. These correspond to the real and double of the C languages. Today, I'm only going to talk about the ones that correspond to the reals. In Fortran, they're called reals, and we define them the way you think we will. I'm now going to have a variable named s. It's floating point. I'm going to have a running sum that I'll store into s, and I'll initially store a zero into s. So I'm going to initialize s to be zero. To emphasize the fact that it's floating point, I'll actually say 0.0, .0 though I could probably get away without doing that. Now, I want to emphasize here, I've made a deliberate mistake. If you think about what this sum actually is, the first term is 1, the second term is the square of 1 over 2, 1 fourth, and all of the terms are positive, so this sum certainly is bigger than 1.25 in reality. The compiler appears to be complaining about something, but if you look at it, it just says there's an unused variable. That doesn't hurt anything. What does hurt something, my head, is that the compiler compiled the program with only a warning. When I ran it, I get one, when I know perfectly well that the sum is at least 1.25. There is a logical mistake here. When I write one, the computer interprets that as the integer one. When I write i, star star two, i is an integer variable. So this is going to be an integer. When i is bigger than one, i squared will be bigger than one. And this fraction, one over i squared, will be one divided by an integer bigger than one, and it will truncate to zero. After the very first go-round in this loop, the sum is not going to change any. There are various ways of fixing this. I'm going to show you what I always do. As a first try, I'm going to put 1.0 upstairs, now, any sane compiler will look at that and say, oh, he's doing a fraction. The data types on the top and bottom are different, but we'll promote the I squared to being floating point. Most sane compilers will do that. Let's see if this one will. It appears to have done so. The actual value of the infinite series is pi squared over 6. This is our computed sum of the first 10,000 terms. 1.644 is pretty close to pi squared over 6. If I have a compiler and it's not that careful, I can force it to be careful, though. Fortran is designed to be very similar to mathematics. So when I want to convert a value from integer into a floating point value, if I want to cast it to a floating point, here I'll say float of i. This is a number which is expressed in floating point format that has the same value as the value of the integer i. If your compiler acts funny on you, do this and see if that doesn't fix the problem. It certainly doesn't hurt anything. My five minutes is about up. 
we will speak more of these matters in the future. Until then, I hope everyone has a good day, and I'll talk to you again soon.